This state subject, which was rolled back medical marijuana plant minimums. This goes to the single subject rule, which not only is about confusion and deception, but the prohibition on law rolling. The voters deserve the opportunity and have a primary right to decide to repeal Measure G without being required and simultaneously to lower plant limit guidelines that unconstitutionally oppose criminal penalties on patients making a legal choice or not to avail themselves of an ID card. This right to a clean election is so important to so many people, and it is a right protected under law that the status quo pending trial and during trial must be preserved by granting the order I request here. <clears throat> we don't have to determine the constitutionality of Measure B. We're not here to find whether Measure B is constitutional or legal. That's to be decided at the trial. We're here about an injunction, a preliminary injunction on peremptory risk to preserve some kind of status quo so a trial can happen on the legality of Measure B without it being in effect. How could a trial on Measure B take place if it passed during the trial? We have to ask jurors how they voted on it, etc. All the while we've been talking, the election we are discussing has moved forward without slowing down or stopping. We're now five days from the close of voting. It's 8 p.m. on Tuesday. We can no longer ask for the ballots not to be printed. We can no longer ask they not be mailed. It's even impractical to ask they not be counted. The machines are going to count them anyway as they count the votes for candidates and other measures on the ballot. We're not asking for pre-election review. The election is all but over. We are asking for order to protect the right of the class I represent to a fair trial on the merits. <clears throat> We're asking for the right of the electorate not to be swayed by knowing how they voted when both these subjects were yoked together in one initiative. We are asking for the only possible injunction left that will preserve the status quo pending trial that the results be sealed and not certified. Finally, well not finally, sealing the ballot pending trial will not prejudice the performance of the initiative. If Measure B is about enacting public policy, little or nothing is lost in delaying the onset of new policy until constitutional questions can be cleared up and confusions of repressions of a trial in the merits while the government is trying to implement Measure B. How could prosecutions be based on it? Your Honor, we've got this newspaper headline today about uh, six uh, individuals with 100 plants, and they're within the medical marijuana guidelines. The headline is great. It's going to be thrown out of the trial as a result of the Kelly decision. The Kelly decision is ups going to upset all possible future prosecutions based on plant limits. How can Measure B be in effect while this is uh, a trial that's going on about the legality of Measure B? Severability is not an issue. The severability language in Measure B only takes effect if and when it's approved until then the court has a choice. Either the subjects are germane to one another and thus not severable, or they're not germane and we are thus to be both excluded under the single subject rule of the state constitution. What rules is the effect of partial enactment on the intent of the framers of Measure B if the plant limits were severed would the repeal of Measure G have any meaning? For all extents and purposes, all marijuana would become medical and uh, Measure uh, G would not even have to be in effect. And finally, the fate of the Kelly ruling is not an issue. It's only pertinent to the final ruling on the merits as we are here to uh, today seeking only a temporary sealing of the ballots. Temporary sealing of the ballots. The only issues are likelihood to prevail and relative harm. Section 11362.77 was not made unconstitutional on May 22nd by the appeals court. It was unconstitutional when the governor signed it. It was unconstitutional when Measure B was written and placed out for public inspection. It was unconstitutional when I began this action, when I asked the TRO, it's illegal and unconstitutional at every point in this case. It's unconstitutional today, and it will be unconstitutional on Tuesday as well. The Attorney General's appeal will not affect this matter. It will only treat a question of whether the limits were permissive under the voluntary card program or exclusive under the criminal code section of 11357. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> this uh, section is only unconstitutional if it imposes criminal penalties, and that's what the Attorney General and the Appeals Court are going to argue about. You have it in your hands, finally, to design any relief you like in this matter. I ask you today for an alternative mandate, sealing the results of the election for Measure B. 
pending trial or disposition in the Court of Appeals at a preliminary injunction against certification of the election. I ask you, Your Honor, to prohibit the respondents from announcing the results or certifying the election unless and until released by court order. If need be, order the ballots locked up under supervision of the court. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Zotter. Your Honor, I think uh, I probably set forth my argument as well as I could in writing, so unless the court has any specific questions, I'm certainly happy to respond. But, uh, uh, one issue that I would like you to address, at least briefly, is uh, the Code of Civil Procedures prohibition on the court uh, considering or reconsidering the order of April 23rd while the appeal is pending. Well, the the law on that, obviously, like the, the, the Varian case is a good guide. I'm sorry, the what case? Varian, B-A-R-I-A-N. Uh, on the one hand, um, it does uh, suggest that in some cases, a denial of a preliminary injunction, although it is appealable under the design of 4.1, um, in the average case, it's not, it does not stay the action of the, uh, the trial court under 916 because uh, there is a case, the Gray versus Bybee case, that's very on that. On the other hand, the reason that both Gray and Varian indicated that it does not stay the effects of the trial court is because most preliminary injunctions attempt to preserve the status quo. And uh, as I argued, I